In this video, I'm going to show you how to easily cut some houndstooth dovetails for the front laminate of the split top rubo bench. It's actually quite simple and easy to do. You can do it by hand completely with hand saws and chisels, but I'm going to use the band saw to do it just because I simply don't have any hand saw with a saw plate deep enough to do the two and one eighth inch distance for these houndstooth dovetails, at least for the condor tail part of them. I do have a, a dovetail saw that will do the houndstooth part, but not the longer condor. So let me show you how to do that because it is really quite simple. When laying out the houndstooth dovetails for this front laminate on the split top rubo bench, I drew it out here and I used uh, some proportions I was able to work out from some of Frank Straza's Instagram pictures and videos to come up with this. And it looks like he's using about a one to seven or one and eight ratio. So using some simple trigonometry from back in elementary school, you know, you can work out your uh, rise over run. So for a one to seven angle, you can work it out to a little over eight degrees. But I also worked out the one to six and the one to eight. And I kind of settled on somewhere around a one to eight. So I'm just gonna go a little bit past seven degrees and make myself a jig so I can mark out these dovetails on the main piece or the actual real front laminate. This was just the off cut from when I squared off this actual piece so that I can lay out the real houndstooth dovetails. I've just got a piece here that I've used for making various dovetail jigs over the, the past uh, few years. It's cut for a one to six ratio right now, so we'll just nick off a tiny bit to make it the one to eight. And then we'll set the saw up about seven and a half degrees, seven and a quarter, seven and a half degrees the other way, and we'll nip off the other one. And there we go. Perfect dovetail jig. Here I'm just setting up my marking gauge to two and an eighth so that I can mark all the way around the front laminate to designate where the baseline of the dovetails are going to be. My front laminate, I've left it at about four and a quarter inches wide or thick for the uh, bench top because when I glue it on, it's gonna shift and turn and slide a little bit unless I put something in for alignment, which I don't know if I will or not. I am going to lay out these dovetails or the houndstooth dovetails dead center on it. So there's about an eighth of an inch of waste on both the bottom and the top edge of that front laminate. And I'll just hand plane it flush with the bench top once I get to that stage. Now I probably can't get this right to a, a point with my skill level, I'm gonna make that about a 16th of an inch wide or so. I think we'll use a marking knife. That way if I do have to get a chisel into that, I'll be able to at a later time. We'll have to use the ruler to extend this all the way down to that baseline. And we've got the, the bases here. They're about an inch wide. So these tails end up being oh, about one and nine sixteenths. So we'll try and split that in half to find the midpoint right about there. And using this as our guide, it looks like we're going about one and three eighths. And I'm just gonna kind of mark roughly where it is here. just mark our waist so we don't get confused. And I will mark the end of this board as well. Mm -hmm. 
The first thing you're going to do is make yourself a guide that'll give you the one to eight angle for the condor or the houndstooth dovetails. And very, very simple. Take a piece of scrap sheet goods and I like to make it about 16 inches long. And this was a suggestion in an article from Jamil at Benchcrafted that you can find on their website. Eight to one ratio is the same as doubling that 16 by two. So this is 16 inches, this is two inches, and you're just going to mark it off on here and just cut a straight line with the bandsaw. I ended up cleaning this up a little bit with a jointer just so that it was nice and straight. You don't necessarily have to because you've got a uh, nice solid surface that this is going to sit against and not flutter whatsoever. And you just put a little screw in the end of your guide or your, your jig here so that the workpiece can hook onto it and basically you feed it in. You're just gonna set your fence at the right location to get the cuts lined up on your uh, lines that you've put on here already. So let's go ahead and cut this. When using the bandsaw to cut these tails, you're gonna to wanna to go as slow as possible so that you can make the sidewalls super, super smooth. The slower you go, the straighter they're going to be and the less cleanup you're gonna to need to do with a chisel. When backing out of the cut, just go nice and slowly and just keep things nice and controlled. You can get these dovetails centered perfectly by not moving the fence and just simply flipping the front laminate over so that you can cut the one that would be on the other side of the front laminate. Every time you do adjust the fence to make another cut, you are going to leave the fence in place for two cuts, once with the outside facing up and once with the outside facing down. And here's the end result. There's a little bit of fraying just from the bandsaw blade, but the actual edges of the tails on all of these pieces are actually very, very crisp. So it should come out really nice and pristine when this goes into the bench. So the next step is to chisel out all the waste area that's shaded in here, and that won't take very long. So let's get to that. I chose to use a coping saw to get rid of most of the waste because it's pretty fast and efficient at getting rid of it all. Now, in order to chop out the remaining waste with the chisels, you need to make sure they're very, very sharp. One important thing is you're gonna to wanna to have some of these bevel edge chisels, okay? And these bevel edge chisels don't have 90 degree sides. They come in on a bit of an angle on each side. And that makes it very easy to get into the bottom corners of the waste area when you're chiseling these out. With a sharp chisel, you can probably push it through or some very, very light taps. You are gonna to wanna to be careful that you don't hit the walls along the top edges. You don't want these nice, pristine, straight, crisp edges to be destroyed by a stray chisel. Now, after you get things super close to that baseline, Set your chisel right in your marking gauge line and make sure your chisel is sharp and you should be able to go right down, right along it. And if you want to, you can undercut just a little bit. So rather than having your chisel at a perfect 90 degrees, you can angle it slightly towards the uh, bottom of the baseline here so that you can undercut just a little bit and that ensures that the joint's gonna close really easy. Now I've only gone down about halfway here. I'll get the other half from the other side and we'll do the same thing to the narrower houndstooth ones here as well. I will say that the smaller amount of wood you try and chisel off at one time, the better because you'll have much more control over your chisels and you'll be less likely to bruise any of these nice edges that you've made with the bandsaw already. Plus, the chisel is gonna actually go through the wood easier.
when getting right to your baseline, you can actually let the chisel click right into your marking gauge line. And then you know you're right in it. You don't have to be quite as careful on the, the back because it's never gonna be seen. But you certainly wanna be careful that you keep the walls of those tails at 90 degrees. And if you've done all that correctly, you should be able to just check that for squareness on the baselines. And I don't have a hump in the middle of that one, or that one, or that one. So I think we're good to keep going and we'll remove the sides next. The reason that I left the outsides on until the end is because I didn't want to bruise any of the corners on these tails. So I figured if I left them on, it would just help protect things a little bit more. So we'll just go through and make a little bit of a knife wall here with a chisel so that we'll be able to saw down that line a little bit easier. And I'm just gonna use my dovetail saw to saw down that. I am gonna take a light pass on the back of this front laminate just to make a very, very shallow cut or a rabbit almost, if I can call it that, with the router plane, just so that I can have a really nice ledge here to butt up against the end cap for when I cut those houndstooth dovetails. I'm keeping a lot of pressure on my left hand down on this. Go careful across that baseline. When laying out these houndstooth dovetails, you gotta make sure you've got that front laminate exactly on that end cap where it needs to be. And I have it clamped on at both ends just to make sure that it's not going to move at all. Now, it may be a little bit tricky to mark these because they're so tall or deep. The uh, very outside is gonna be quite easy because you can get in there quite easily. But for the most part, just take your time and eventually you'll get it. This was actually one of the first times I even used this Rob Cosman dovetail saw and although my cuts are not perfect, they are definitely good enough for a bench and I think they turned out pretty good. So I didn't film the chiseling out of these first two houndstooth dovetails but I am gonna show you how I do this. And I got some really good tips from Frank Straza on Instagram. He did some really good videos recently in real time on how to do this because it really goes quickly when you use the technique that he was showing on his Instagram account. The first thing that he talks about is making a fairly shallow cut with your chisels along your baseline to establish a really good spot for your chisels to kind of drop into because you want those areas to be crisp obviously. If you don't give yourself a little bit of relief it's going to push the chisel back into the, the, the portion of this end cap that's going to be showing. And I'm not going to chisel too hard I'm just going to try and set the chisel in there and establish a bit of a, a bit of a deeper cut than what the first little cuts were being down to with the chisel here. And we'll just work that down a little bit more so that there's a good solid amount of wood ready to take the, the blunt force of this chisel once we start really hammering down on it. 
And you could use a wider chisel for this. So that's probably plenty deep. I'm probably down like a good solid 16th of an inch. And now you can kind of start really going to town to hog out this material. And Frank says to use the bevel down. One other tip that Frank gives on these front edges is to once again use the bevel down and come up on a bit of a diagonal line. And they come out pretty easy once you've relieved the material in behind them closer to that baseline at the back. We'll just try and clean up along the top surface of this one houndstooth dovetail to get it to match this one here down to our scribed baseline, I'm gonna call it. don't want to damage the corners on any of these show corners or edges. So I'm going to leave this just about a 32nd or so from my scribed line. I think you can see that on there just where my thumbnail is. So I'm going to leave it like that so that I can come back later on. And once I've done all the really rough stuff, I'll go around everything and try and get it all nice and crisp on every edge. I didn't quite get perfectly aligned to my scribed lines with the marking knife when I sawed down everything with the dovetail saw. So I am gonna have a little bit of cleaning up to do with the chisels in the end anyways. No real big deal, but just not quite the way I was envisioning or planning on this going, but that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. In order to clean out this waste area in these tight spots, I found it very useful to use a narrow chisel and just use that bevel down once again and follow it in a vertical fashion and just kind of work deeper and deeper into the dovetails and eventually just take the chisel and go along the sides to remove the little pieces that are left behind where the dovetail saw would have made its cut. Now, I hope this comes out on the video here, but when you have that bevel down along this cut, and if you follow this wall angle, it makes almost a perfect cut for you automatically, and you'll have very minimal pairing to do once you actually get to that stage. So let me just show you. I've got the angle of the edge of the, the chisel right along the angle of that dovetail there. 
And they just pop out right along your cut line and pretty much right along the wall of that. Then you can just take a slightly wider chisel and just pare down that side to get rid of that slight ridge that was left behind from the edge of the chisel. And you won't be able to do it on the other side because the chisel is going to bump into the top edge here, but you can definitely do it on that outside one. Once you complete the last little bit of chiseling, then you can actually go start fitting it to the front laminate. And it's going to be a little bit of trial and error, you know, putting it together, taking it apart several times until you get the fit just right. But you will have to pare away a little bit here and a little bit there until you can actually get the front laminate to drop into the end cap. But once you've got it, it is going to look sweet. So I've got this front laminate all in place. Just have a little bit to plane off once I've glued it up. But just to keep that alignment like I was talking about on the far end, I just drilled and screwed a screw in here into the uh, waist area because the end of the bench is going to be pretty close to where that walnut uh, strip for the dog hole strip is. So that'll keep it from sliding back and forth once I clamp it and the dovetails at the other end should keep it in place nicely too. Yesterday I glued on the walnut end cap and I did it using tight bond hide glue. It comes already set to go in a bottle, super easy. And at the advice of Frank Straza, I mixed it with some walnut sawdust. He never really told me how to work it into some of the cracks or gaps that might've been in these dovetails, but I basically mixed it up in a small little container and made a paste kind of like peanut butter with it, with the glue and the sawdust. And that just kind of worked it into all of these little uh, edges and hopefully that's going to fill in any gaps and give me a really crisp line all the way around these dovetails. They don't look good right now but I'm going to get the hand plane on them and just plane off that end cap. It is maybe a 30 second proud of the maple front laminate and we're going to use a Veritas low angle jack on it. I freshly sharpened the blade so hopefully it'll do the trick. I did chamfer this edge as well as the outside two edges a little tiny bit just so I don't get any breakout or tear out and hopefully I'll get a nice crisp edge when we're all done. Let's just kind of work away at this slowly and get it down to the level of that maple and see what it looks like and hopefully it looks really good. So here's that soft maple front laminate with the tiger maple striping on it and the walnut end cap where the houndstooth dovetails are. I think it came out really, really good for one of the first times I've ever done dovetails and I've never done the houndstooth dovetails before so I'm really pleased with how these actually came out. Yeah, there's some minor gaps here and there, but I think that's going to be the case with anybody who does these. They're pretty challenging, but I think if you follow along with the video, you'll be able to get this kind of a result yourself. It really isn't that hard, it just takes a bit of patience. So go give it a try. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought about it. So until next time, go build something beautiful.